Finally tonight, the fight to rescue a sunken treasure. The treasure is coral, which protects our shores and even provides medicine. But it's disappearing four times as fast as the rainforest. Here's our science and technology correspondent, Daniel Seberg. They're a carnival of color and life. Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the Earth's surface, but they're home to millions of marine plants and animals. But rising ocean temperatures have claimed 20% of them around the world since the 1950s. Another 50% could be wiped out by 2030. We need to do everything we possibly can to save the remaining ones we've got. My research might be able to help, then I'm willing to give it a go. Andrew Baker hopes to, in a sense, inoculate the corals to build their resistance against the rapidly growing threat of warming waters. Basically, we're going to go down and very carefully, almost surgically, uh, remove uh, these colonies. We're going to pick uh, about a dozen of these colonies. About 10 miles off the coast of Miami in Biscayne Bay, I watched as Baker and his team harvested a dozen mustard hill corals, the first step in his experiment. This reef system is today a fraction of what it was just 20 years ago. So the corals that would normally be building this underwater structure, building this habitat, they've all been lost. Lost to what's called bleaching. Corals thrive because of their give and take partnership with microscopic algae, each providing food and protection for the other. The problem is that partnership between the coral and its algae is very, very fragile, very sensitive. And all it takes is a degree or two above the normal temperatures and corals will lose these algae. And that's exactly what's happening in this IMAX time-lapse footage. The once vibrant coral turns a ghostly white and dies. A lifeless landscape remains. Algal symbionts that are inside corals. Back in the lab, Baker proudly showed off one of the world's great collections of coral. We have about 12,000 samples collected from uh, reefs all over the world. Coral DNA is stored in a supercooled vault, and what Baker's team discovered here is what gives him hope, that there are varieties of that life-giving algae, and a few, from places like Africa, have a higher tolerance to heat. And that allows them to adapt very, very quickly, much, much more quickly than sort of Darwinian natural selection. It doesn't take centuries or generations or decades. Some researchers say Baker's plan to inject corals with the hardier algae is a crapshoot at best, but he says, that's no reason not to try. Daniel Seberg, CBS News, Miami.